greatest common factor. That's what we just were doing. That's what we did last Thursday. But now we're talking about this process called factoring. And when we factor something, we are breaking it down into smaller pieces. So you can do this with a number. Can you guys give me a number greater than 30? Forty-five. Forty-five is good. <coughs> I can break this down into parts. I can break it down into the product of two numbers. What two numbers multiply together to get to forty-five? Five times nine. So I just factored forty-five into two parts. Into two. Uh, these are called factors, and the forty-five is called the product. Right, 40, 5 times 9 gives me 45. But I can also do the same thing with a polynomial. So if I have something like 3x plus 6, I can rewrite this as 3 times x plus 2. Right, 3 times x would give me 3x, 3 times 2 would give me 6. And the way that I did that is I looked for the greatest common factor between 3x and 6, which you guys told me earlier was 3. So if I factor 3 out of 3x, I'm left with just x. If I factor 3 out of 6, I'm left with 2. So now I've written 3x plus 6 as the product of two factors. Okay. So that's what factoring is. It's the process of rewriting a polynomial as a product of two or more polynomials. Okay. They sort of do the same thing here. In this example, they take 12x squared plus 6x, and they factor out this 2x. They take 2x out of this polynomial. So they're taking 12x squared and they're dividing it by 2x. And then they're taking 6x and dividing it by 2x. And that's how they end up with this 6x and this 3. If a polynomial cannot be factored, it is called prime. Okay, and I'll show you some examples of this. So the greatest common factor, this is what we talked about last week, is just the greatest monomial that divides into each term of the polynomial. So to find the greatest common factor, we need to look at first the coefficients and determine the largest number that divides into each of those coefficients. So let's look at this example right here. 9y plus 21y, 9y cubed plus 21y squared. What numbers are the coefficients? What numbers are the coefficients in this example here? Yeah, 9 and 21. Coefficients just mean the numbers in front of the variables. And what's the greatest common factor of 9 and 21? It's 3. Okay. And then my next step is to look at the variables. The variables. In order for a variable to be a part of the greatest common factor, it must be present in all terms, all of the terms. So if it is present in all of the terms, the GCF is going to be the variable with the smallest exponent. So my variables are obviously the letters, right? Y cubed and Y squared. Do I have a Y present in all of the terms? Yes. yes. So I look to the one that has the smallest exponent, which would be Y squared, and that's the part of my GCF. Okay. So that's what we did last week, was we were just figuring out GCF of different polynomials. But now we're doing this process called factoring. So it's not enough to just find the GCF. Now we have to factor out 
the GCF. And we factor it out by dividing. We divide each term by the greatest common factor. So look at what they do here. They take this 9y cubed, 9y cubed, and they are going to divide it by the greatest common factor, divided by the 3y squared. And then they take the 21y squared. And again, they're dividing it by the greatest common factor by 3y squared. So if I divide 9y cubed by 3y squared, I get 3y. Right? 9 divided by 3 is 3. y cubed divided by y squared is just y to the first. And then if I divide 21y squared by 3y squared, I end up with just 7. 21 divided by 3 is 7. y squared divided by y squared cancels out. Okay. And in this factored form, what we do is we take the GCF and it goes out in front of the parentheses. It goes out in front of the parentheses right here. Got that 3y squared. And then the remaining factors go inside the parentheses. Okay, it's kind of the opposite of distributing. It's the opposite of distributing. And that's how we can always check our work is if we distribute. Right, so if I take this 3y squared and I multiply it by 3y plus 7, I should end back up at my original problem, the 9y cubed plus 21y squared, right? Which is what I get. 3 times 3 is 9. y squared times y to the first is y cubed. 3y squared times 7 would be 21y squared. And that's what I started with, right? So it's just the opposite of distributing, taking it out. So we'll do this first column together. So I've got 4x minus, or 42x minus 12. So my first step is to figure out what's my GCF. Yeah, it's 6. And why didn't you include an x in there? Yeah, the 12 doesn't have an x, only the 42 does. So my greatest common factor is just a number, no variable. Okay, so when it says to factor, it's not enough just to find the greatest common factor. I need to factor this out. I have to divide this by 6 and divide this by 6. Since I start with two terms here, I have to end up with two terms in my answer. So let's divide this. 42x divided by 6. 7x. What's negative 12 divided by 6? Negative 2. So 6 times 7x minus 2. So I'm glad you think so. Let's look at a little more complicated ones. I'm going to do this whole first column with you. So let's find greatest common factor in number 4. Mm -hmm, 8. And again, why is there no x? The 16 doesn't have an x. Even though these two do, all three of them do not. So I don't include the x there. Okay, so my 8 goes out in front. Since I started with three terms, I have to end up with three terms. And what I'm doing is I'm dividing each term by 8. So what's 32x squared divided by 8? 4x squared. What's negative 8x divided by 8? Negative 1x, or just negative x if you'd rather. And then 16 divided by 8? Positive 2. Is that okay? Okay. And the number 7 is kind of crazy. 
So my first step is to figure out my greatest common factor. What's greatest common factor of 24 and 36? Not six, huh? 12. Okay, and do both terms have a's? Yeah, and what's the smallest of the two exponents? Four, so it's gonna be a to the fourth. Do both terms have b's? What's the smallest of the exponents? Two, so b squared. And then do both terms have c's? What's the smallest of the exponents? One, so just c, or c to the first if you want to write it that way. Okay, so that's my GCF. This is what I have to divide by. 12a to the fourth. Ooh. 12a to the fourth. b squared b. Divide by 12a to the fourth. b squared c. Okay, the greatest common factor, the 12a to the fourth b squared c, stays out in front. Since I'm starting with two terms, I'm going to have two terms inside my parentheses. Okay, and I'm dividing each term by this greatest common factor. So when I'm dividing something nasty like this, think about it in parts. 24 divided by 12. What's a to the sixth divided by a to the fourth? A to the second. Good. What's b to the second divided by b to the second? Hmm? Would it be just b? What do you do when you're dividing with exponent? Subtracting. So it'd be b to the zero. What is anything raised to the zero? One, right? So that part just cancels out to be one. Not B, one. The C's also cancel out. So when I divide this first term by my greatest common factor, all I'm left with is 2A squared. Okay, now let's do it for this one too. So negative 36 divided by 12. Negative 3. A to the 4th divided by A to the 4th. A cancels out. B squared divided by B squared. Cancels out to be 1. C cubed divided by C. C squared. And that's it. Any questions so far? Okay, can you guys try these first two columns, please? No, the second two columns, I guess. The rest of the ones on this page, and then we'll go through these on the board together.